Hey there, welcome to Neuropod, a channel covering everything related to Elon Musk's brain-computer interface company, Neuralink. My name is Ryan Tanaka, and in this update episode, the first thing we'll cover is that Neuralink has officially announced they've completed their first human trial surgery in the United Kingdom. I'll discuss what was shared, and then we have this video of Nick Ray, Neuralink's eighth patient, controlling an assistive robotic arm. Then, Neuralink has leased a 144,000 square foot property in South San Francisco, and will be expanding their presence in Silicon Valley, in addition to their ongoing expansion in Austin, Texas. We'll go through more details there, and then Neuralink's quote-unquote competitor, Science, led by Max Hodak, has released some results of their study. I'll share that update, followed by an update from Nolan, the first human in the world with a Neuralink. Plus, my trip to downtown Phoenix for a presentation where Neuralink's third patient, Brad, and clinical trials lead, Ramina, spoke and answered questions. And then a few things to look forward to. Let's start off with this quote directly from Neuralink's first UK human trial participant. Paul said, to say I was nervous about having brain surgery is a huge understatement, but when I heard about the study, I was drawn to see if I could make use of this technology to improve my freedom, but also to contribute to research for other people with conditions like mine. This was Neuralink's post announcing the surgery, completed at University College London Hospitals. We're excited to announce our first participant in the UK. Paul, who is paralyzed due to motor neuron disease, received his Neuralink implant at UCLH earlier this month and was able to control a computer with his thoughts just hours after surgery. Pretty remarkable that the device becomes usable so quickly after the surgery is completed. Basically no training and no technology proficiency required. It simply just works. Also, I've learned the most common motor neuron disease is ALS. Thus, this is the most common way to refer to ALS in the UK. Neuralink continued, He's now working with our engineers to explore using the implant to play his favorite video games like Dawn of War and perform other tasks that could enrich and restore autonomy in his daily life. This marks an important step toward making our technology available to help people around the world. And then the release on the hospital website included these other important and inspiring messages. The surgery went as planned, and on the day following the procedure, the patient was able to begin using their BCI implant to move a computer cursor with their thoughts and to return home from the hospital. The chief investigator for the study, Mr. Harith Akram, said, This treatment has the potential to help thousands of patients trapped in their own bodies, for whom we have previously been able to offer very little. Patients volunteering for the study are courageous and inspiring, and we thank them for their contributions to advancing healthcare. I'm so proud of our talented team stretching the boundaries for patients with paralysis, and I want to thank them for their dedication to finding effective treatments. The principal investigator at UCLH, Mr. William Muirhead, said, It was remarkable to see Paul using his brain-computer interface on the very first day after surgery. He is now using it in his own home and working hard every day to improve his calibration and control. Using digital devices can be very challenging for people living with paralysis, so to see Paul's growing independence in directly controlling his computer is incredibly rewarding. Since receiving the implant, Paul has been working with Neuralink engineers to explore potential uses for the device to enrich and restore autonomy in his daily life. Follow-up appointments and research sessions will continue monitoring the patient as they learn to use the device. This brings Neuralink's total patient count to 13, with four different hospital sites in Phoenix, Miami, Toronto, and London. Next, we have this fun video from Neuralink's eighth patient, Nick Ray, using his implanted Neuralink to connect to a robotic arm via Bluetooth to feed himself. That's pretty freaking weird. In another post, Nick added, This was truly a week for the books. I can't remember the last time I put in a solid eight-hour workday, 
and last week, I put in three in a row. It was one of the most incredible experiences of my life so far. I spent Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday working with the Assistive Robotic Arm, or ARA team, operating the ARA with my BCI. It was a week of second firsts, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it all. I put on my own hat for the first time in years. I microwaved my own chicken nuggets and fed myself. I learned how to open the fridge and how to remove and replace lids on jars. I even got to try driving my wheelchair with it slowly inside. And then we'll skip to this next part where he says, So much fun. So much learning. So much progress. This project is incredible and I'm so grateful to be a part of it. Shoutouts to Neuralink and the Buoniconti Fund for making this all possible. Life with my BCI has been and continues to be so surreal and so rewarding. Can't wait to see what comes next. Be good, do good. He also added, I can control individual fingers. All this progress showcases how Neuralink's device is not only helping restore digital freedom for patients to use a computer, but also how they can have physical freedom by controlling a robot arm. Eventually, they'll be controlling a full robot, or robots. And if you ask me, another Elon founding company happens to make the best of those out there. And what makes this even more incredible is that these robots, <laughs> Optimus, will become seamless and natural extensions of ourselves. This was confirmed by Danish, Neuralink's head of mechanical engineering for the surgery team, where he cited that Nick gave his first-hand experience controlling the arm. He says, it responded just as naturally and quickly as if it had been attached to my body. My interview with Nick should be out soon. Then we have even more details on the convoy study, directly from Barrow Neurological Institute, the hospital site where the first surgery was performed. This is the same clinical trial that allows Nick to control the robotic arm, but this time we'll hear thoughts from Alex. And then Barrow says, Alex Conley, who has a spinal cord injury, was the second patient to undergo neurosurgery at Barrow to receive Neuralink's N1 implant as part of the PRIME study, now also enrolled in the CONVOY study. Alex is the first to use the brain-computer interface, or BCI device, to control a robotic arm. And then from Dr. Lawton, the president and CEO of Barrow Neurological Institute, says, Interacting with the physical world is something many of us take for granted. But for patients like Alex, losing that ability is something they face every day. With BCI studies like Prime and Convoy, we may finally be able to say, there is something more we can do for you. I'm Alex Conley. I uh, fractured C4 and C5 in my spinal cord, and it was diagnosed as a complete spinal cord injury. I feel kind of honored that they picked me to do the robotic arm. There's so many people that don't have the support system that I've got, the people that I've got. I know even to just a robotic arm sitting on the side of their chair, just another step toward being independent. We used to see spinal cord injured patients come in, we would operate and stabilize their necks, and then we would send them on their way to rehab, and that was the end. There was nothing more we could do for them. One of the reasons I'm so excited about Neuralink is that we can tell patients finally there's something more we can do for you. With patient one, we gave him his digital autonomy, things that allowed him to interact with his computer. With patient two, we went one step further. We gave him all that, but now in addition, he can drive a robotic arm that lets him turn on a light switch, open a door, or move something that's ahead of him. Before the accident, I was very mechanical and hands-on, and building parts and fixing things was pretty much my whole life. But then the accident happened and kind of took all that away. I wasn't able to express myself the way I usually could. What the convoy team is, is a, the team at Neuralink that's working on assistive robotic devices controlled by the brain implant, physical devices in the real world. You just think about, I'm going to take my arm and move left. I'm going to take my arm and move right. And from that, we issue commands to the robot that then does inverse kinematics and math to make that motion happen. They got back the next morning and it was just, it was remarkable how much they changed overnight. It worked 10 times better than it did the day before. I honestly thought it would take longer to get the level of control that I've gotten. The amount of effort that those guys put in is 
it's leaps and bounds above what I expected. It's a really good feeling seeing what what that thing's capable of. Neuralink's president, DJ, added that right now, the robotic arm allows for seven degrees of freedom of control. But in the future, more than 22 degrees of freedom of control will be possible with Tesla's Optimus robot. Next, we have this article saying Elon Musk is quietly expanding in the Bay Area again, starting with Neuralink. But before we get into that, a note from today's sponsor, Linkachart. A lot of us are managing a health condition or caring for somebody who is. Maybe like me, you've been using multiple patient logs, medical test PDF files, and screenshots to keep track of all your health records. Today's sponsor, Linkachart, helps you bring everything together, your records, tests, and wearable data in one secure place. Linkachart's AI uses that context to reveal blind spots in your medical history, answer your health questions with credible sources, and help ease that constant health anxiety we all feel. Do me a favor and click the link in the description to pre-order Linkachart for free, no credit card required. Thanks, and back to the episode. Neuralink has leased a vacant building in South San Francisco that has the same square footage as two and a half professional American football fields. The article states, the 144,000 square foot property at 499 Forbes Boulevard has been vacant since 2023 after biotech firm Interven Biosciences pulled out of its lease amid an industry downturn, according to a report by the Business Times. The lease adds to a growing Bay Area presence for Musk, who moved several of his companies to Texas after criticizing California's business climate during the pandemic. While this is true, Neuralink continues to build out their facilities in the greater Austin, Texas area. And then in looking at this map for some perspective of the new property, you can see there are several biotechnology companies around the area. Plus, it has great proximity to the airport, alongside other great features of being located at the northern end of Silicon Valley. Next, I thought I'd share a small update on Science, the company Neuralink co-founder Max Hodak started. Their goal is to help restore sight, firstly with those who have age-related macular degeneration, the most common type of blindness in old people. As you can see in this picture, there is a 2mm by 2mm implant that gets inserted beneath the retina. The user wears a pair of glasses that transmits translated visual information to the implant. The result are these low-resolution black, gray, and white quote-unquote images that may not seem that great, but in reality, they make a giant difference in helping somebody navigate their environment and recognize the people around them. For example, this shows reading text, this one shows seeing a baby and distinguishing faces, and this one shows more general sight. This Nature article shared more details about the study. It says that 26 of 32 participants, or a little more than 80%, had meaningful improvement in their vision after one year. Now tying this back to Neuralink, it's simply another reminder that we shouldn't take Neuralink's success record for granted. As far as I'm aware, they are 13 for 13 in the study participants being able to successfully control a computer with just their mind. Also, we should expect trials for blindsight to begin next year. The approach they're taking is quite different but the end result should be fairly similar, as you can see with the moving images with numerous flashes of light to outline an image. One more thing, I predict there's a major knock-on effect of restoring this vision, less deterioration of the brain. Though it's anecdotal, I've seen several people whose mental faculties decline rapidly as a result of their poor vision or poor hearing. Sure, some may say this is just a function of older age, but earlier in this video, they said about 40% of the brain's processing power is used for visual information. It would make sense that if you once had that visual information being input, and then you lose that, there would be some atrophy. So restoring this, especially just the ability to navigate your environment without bumping into walls or tripping over objects, plus recognizing faces and being able to read a little bit, will go a very long way. Neuralink's first patient, Nolan, shared a lot in this update, so I'll summarize it in a few bullet points. He got straight A's this semester in school while also working as a paid speaker. He also unfortunately developed a pressure sore on his butt, which by the way, not sponsored, but a friend's company makes seat cushions that dynamically adjust pressure exactly to prevent these types of pressure sores. So check out Caligon if someone you know is at risk. However, this leads to this post where Elon said, Nolan might be the first to receive a Neuralink upgrade and or dual Neuralink implants to further augment his abilities. 
it won't be long before a Neuralink recipient can beat most and eventually all humans at fast reaction video games. Nolan responded with, put me in coach, and Elon gave him a thumbs up. Then about a month ago, I drove over to the ALS Network Arizona chapter meeting where Brad and his wife Tiffany gave a presentation highlighting their experience with Neuralink. I typed the speech using just my thoughts, straight from my brain to the computer. Isn't that wild? Ramina, Neuralink's clinical trials lead, also answered questions from the group. One question in particular that stood out was when one member with ALS asked if you had to be savvy with technology in order to use the device. You do not have to be a tech nerd to use Neuralink, even though it is indeed cutting edge tech. Based on my conversations with several Neuralink patients, it is clear they feel like using the device is just magic. It's plug and play, if you will. Ramina and three Neuralink patients, Brad, Jake, and Nick, We'll talk at the next ALS Network webinar on November 6th. The YouTube link is in the description, but if you just want the highlights, I'll make sure to share in next month's update episode. And there are some great things to look forward to. Neuralink's speech restoration clinical trial study at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi is underway, and we should be hearing more about another site in the US fairly soon. Then folks in the scientific community will probably appreciate that Neuralink submitted a paper to the New England Journal of Medicine that describes the first three patients who were implanted with the Neuralink device, including safety data. And then I'm personally looking forward to these next two. The day that most folks realize Neuralink employees have their heart in making sure these outcomes are positive. Oftentimes they have loved ones who are affected by these brain and spine problems. So they're thinking about how to maximize the safety of the devices. This post from Danish was a nice reminder. So many people think Neuralink is some evil megacorp, but we're literally just out here helping the homies eat pretzels, lol. Thank you for watching and thank you to all the generous Neuropod supporters.